for this session, we will talk about other percentage tax, another tax that is imposed under your business taxes. So we already finished your VAT or value added tax. We go now to your percentage tax. So what is a percentage tax? Percentage tax or your OPT or known as non-VAT is a business tax imposed on persons or entities who sell or list goods, properties or services in the course of trade or business whose sales or receipts does not exceed the VAT threshold. So if you still remember before we talk about your business and your business can either be the selling of goods or services or the sale of goods or properties or the sale of services or lease of properties, okay? So if ever we have a business, we need to determine if ever that business is subject to business tax or not subject to business tax. Once we determine that it is taxable, the tax can either be a VAT or a percentage tax. So when can we say you are a VAT? You are a VAT taxpayer if you are VAT registered or you exceed the VAT threshold. That is 3 million for all transactions except for your franchise grantees, which is your radio or TV franchise grantee, which has a threshold of 10 million. If you are not VATable, then you are considered non-VAT, we have your percentage tax. Therefore, we should learn that percentage tax does not apply to your VAT taxpayers. Another is your 8% gross income tax for your self-employed individuals. And then lastly, it does not apply to any cooperative. Okay, so percentage tax, again, applies if ever you are non-VAT, meaning you are a VAT non-VAT registered or you did not meet the VAT threshold. And therefore, it does not apply if you are a VAT taxpayer or you apply the 8% gross income tax as to your self-employed individuals or your business is a cooperative. Percentage tax is likened to a final tax. Why? Because at most, you just need to get for a particular type of receipt or an income, and then you have a tax rate. So just look into the income, you multiply it to your tax rate. What are the characteristics of percentage tax? First, it is a business tax. When we say it is a business tax, of course, uh, we only have two business taxes. That is your percentage tax or your VAT. And you already know when is it subject to VAT and when will it be subject to percentage tax. Another characteristic of percentage tax is it is a direct tax. So if you still remember, VAT is an indirect tax wherein it is passed on to your uh, buyer. But in percentage tax, whoever is the sender, the impact and incidence, impact and incidence falls to your seller only. So it is a direct tax. You cannot pass it to your buyer. But some businesses, what they do is they top up so that they get the net price that they want. So they top up the percentage tax ahead of time so that they can get the whole price that they want. Next Characteristic of percentage tax, it applies to certain business activities regardless of VAT threshold. So here, you do not need to determine already your VAT threshold. If ever, it is within the OPT. So your OPT provides for business activities in which you have a percentage tax. So even if you meet your VAT threshold or you did, you did not meet your VAT threshold, then what we do, we still subject it to percentage tax in the exception of your radio or TV franchise guarantee. 
So how do we compute your percentage tax? The computation of your percentage tax is your tax base. So this is normally your gross receipts or your gross scenes. And then we multiply it to your rate. This is your other percentage tax. And then you have now all other percentage tax rate. And this is your tax payable. So what is the difference of this computation as to your VAT? In your OPT, it is tax at gross. So whatever is the gross amount, that is already. While in your VAT, to compute for your VAT payable, it is tax at net. So when we say it is tax at net, we have your output VAT less your input VAT. So your OPT, there is no deduction that is applicable. Whatever is the gross amount, that is the tax base. However, in your VAT, we have your deduction such as your input VAT to get for your VAT payable. So in getting for the payable or your liability or your tax payable, under your OPT, you don't deduct anything. Under VAT, you deduct input VAT. Actually, in your OPT, almost all, in the exception of one, that is your winnings. Later, you will, we will know or we will discuss what is deducted in your winnings to compute for your percentage tax. So your percentage tax, guys, is uh, an enumeration under the tax code. It is an enumeration under the tax code in which uh, it is provided under section uh, 117, section 117, oh, section 116 to section 100. 27 of the NIRC or the tax code. So we look now into your types of percentage tax. The percentage tax can either be a general percentage tax that is for non-VAT or does not meet the VAT threshold. And we have your other percentage tax that is for certain business activity regardless of VAT threshold. Right. So we have your general percentage tax and your other percentage tax. So general percentage tax is in your section 116, while your other percentage tax is from section 117 to section 127 of your NIRC. Let's first discuss your general percentage tax. Your general percentage tax is subject to 3% of your gross sales or receipts. While your other percentage tax, we have your certain percentages from 6 over 10 of 1% until uh, 30%. Okay, so whatever is the rate provided, I think the highest rate is 30%, if I'm not mistaken. So in general percentage tax, it is uh, the same among all of your transactions. While in your other percentage tax or your specific percentage tax, we have uh, uh, different rates from 6, 10 of 1% up to the highest rate. Let's start first with your general percentage tax and let's have an example. So Naruto is an owner of a small variety store. His gross sales in any one year do not exceed the 3 million threshold. He's not VAT registered. The following data are taken from the books of the quarter. In general percentage tax, take note what is important is first, it must be a non-VAT registered person. Next, it does not meet the VAT threshold. Because if any one of this is present, then you go to VAT. Take note, you must be non-VAT registered or you do not meet the VAT threshold so that you have your general percentage tax. Okay, so in our example here, we have inventory of 10,000, gross sales of 45,000, and purchases from VAT registered person, 38,500. The percentage tax due is, again, you just need to get for the gross sales or receipts. We have 45,000. You multiply it to your rate. Our rate for general percentage tax is 3%. Then our percentage tax due is equal to 45,000 times 3%, 1,350. Another example, in the second quarter of 2020, a taxpayer whose annual gross receipts do not exceed 3 million has the following data. 
to what is the percentage tax due and what is the VAT payable. So under your percentage tax, take note, you just need to get for your gross receipts. To get for your gross receipts, you have your AR beginning plus sales less AR end. So how much is the total collections or gross receipts? 50,000 plus 100,000 less 75,000. So we have here 75,000 pesos. Take note, guys, under your percentage tax, we look into your receipts or collections. So here we have a gross receipts of 75,000. However, under VAT, what we look is the gross sales. So we have 100,000 pesos. I hope you don't confuse yourself as to the amount of sales and what is the amount of your receipts. So we have 75,000 the amount of our percentage tax multiplied by 3%. Oh, so our tax base is 75,000 times 3%. Then we have 2,250. Under that, we have 100,000 times 12%. So 12,000, this is output VAT. Less the input VAT, we have purchases with invoice of 11,200 divided by, uh, multiplied by 12 over 112. So our input VAT is 1,200. Our VAT payable is equal to 10,800. Okay. So percentage tax based on your receipts. So our receipts is 75. VAT if sale of goods. If sale of goods, we use your sales. Okay, your net sales. If it's sales of services we use your collections. I hope you still remember that under your VAT. We go now and proceed to your specific percentage tax and we dwell on it one by one. So the first specific percentage tax is your domestic couriers and keepers of garage. So here, as we discuss your specific percentage tax, we look into what is tax here under your domestic couriers and keepers of garage, or what is tax under percentage tax? The certain business activities. So what is the business activity? The tax base is our basis as to the computation of our uh, OPT or percentage tax. And the tax rate, of course, is the percentage tax rate. So what are the business activities that are covered under your domestic couriers and keeper of garage? First, you have your transport of passengers. Next, you have your cars for rent or hire driven by lessee. Another, we have your couriers, transportation, contractors, including persons to transport passengers for hire. Next, we have your domestic couriers by land, include uh, except animal drone two wheeled vehicles. Next, we have your keepers of garage. In short, any transportation of passengers by domestic couriers by land is to be taxed at a percentage tax, including the keepers of garage. Now, the question is, what is the tax base? The tax base is the actual receipts versus the statutory receipts, whichever is higher. So what are these statutory receipts? The following are your statutory receipts. We have your jeepney for hire. We have your public knee. Uh, uti public utility vehicles or public utility booths, and we have your taxis. So for example, you have here taxi, and then let's say your gross receipt for your quarter is 7,000 pesos. So when we say you compare your actual receipts to your statutory, since that is taxi, our gross receipt is 7,000. This is an actual receipt. You compare to your statutory receipt. So look into your taxes, assuming Manila. So we have here 3, 6 quarterly. So whichever is higher, so 7,000 pesos. That is our tax base. You multiply it to 3%. Another example. So let's say that is a publicly utility bus with more than 50 passengers. Let's say your gross receipts is 7,000 pesos. So this is your actual you look into the statutory. So the statutory of a public utility bus, which exceeds 50 passengers, is 7,200, which is higher, 7,200. So that is the tax base. Okay. So here in your domestic careers, so long as it is a domestic career, 
which transport passengers by land, then you can be subject to 3% percentage tax. Also, if you are a keeper of garage, 3% percentage tax. The tax base, please don't forget, the actual receipts versus the statutory receipt. What is the statutory receipt? This is the receipt provided under the law. So it is uh, as if the minimum receipt per quarter or per month. Okay? So don't forget to compare it. Guys, if it says quarter, you compare it to the quarterly receipt. If it say monthly, then you compare it to your monthly receipt. That's the case. Okay? 3% domestic couriers. Another, we have your international couriers. This is known as your international couriers tax. So what international couriers or what business activity under international couriers is subject to percentage tax? So we have your international air courier doing business in the Philippines on transport of cargo from Philippines to foreign country. So this is cargo. If ever, that is an international air courier doing business in the Philippines. Philippines to foreign country. Another, we have your international shipping courier doing business in the Philippines on transport of cargo from Philippines to foreign. So the first one is an air courier. This one is a shipping courier. So what is our tax base? The tax base is a quarterly gross receipt at a tax rate of 3%. So just get for your tax base again, and you multiply it to your 3%. Take note, gross receipts. Next, we have your franchises. For franchises, we have certain franchise activities that is only subject to percentage tax. And what are those franchise activities? We have your radio or television, and we have your gas and water utilities. The tax base, again, is your gross receipts from whatever sources. The tax rate is 3% and 2%. But take note for radio or TV, if ever you meet your 10 million threshold, you become VAT. You become a VAT taxpayer. So gross receipts, again. So let's take a look into this example. So ABS is a franchise grantee. ABS is not VAT registered. During the quarter, it has the following data, 3 million sale of airtime, gross receipts, use of radio station facilities, 500,000, business expenses, 700,000. So what is the fran franchise tax due? So we just need to get for the total gross receipts. This is 3.5 million pesos. You multiply it to your tax rate. So for radio or TV, our tax rate is 3%. So 3.5 times 3%, our answer is? 105,000 pesos, 105,000 pesos, okay? Guys, uh, percentage tax is quite easy. You just need to remember what is to be subject to it, what is the tax base, and what is the tax rate. It looks like a uh, final tax. It is, it is more like a final tax. Next, we have your overseas communication. So what overseas communication is subject to percentage tax? So this is for overseas dispatch message or conversa conversation originating from the Philippines to another country. So this is outgoing. Any outgoing calls is subject to your percentage tax, except for these items. So what are those items? Except if that call is for diplomatic services, or the call is from an or international organization or to an international organization. Another, if that call is for your services or for government services. What is the tax paid? That is the amount paid by the user for the overseas communication. The tax rate is 10%. So for example, you have the following overseas communications to Anna, your girlfriend, to an international organization. So the following is the amount of your payment. So you paid uh, 10,000 for your call to Anna and to an international organization, you paid 4,000. So what is the percentage tax? What is subject to percentage tax is only your call to Anna, your GF at 10%.
So 10,000 times 10%, we have 1,000 pesos. Take note, the tax paid here is your amount paid. So actually, this is an exemption to the rule that it is a direct tax to a seller here. It is a direct tax to your user. To your user. Please do not forget that. Amount paid. Next, we have your banks and non-bank financial intermediaries. So in your bank and non-bank financial intermediaries, this does not apply to your Banco Central ng Pilipinas because again, we cannot tax a government entity. And BSP is considered a fully owned government entity or it is a government instrumentality. So what is the tax base for your bank and non-bank financial intermediaries? We have your gross receipts from sources within the Philippines. Now the question is, what transactions or business activities of your banks and non-bank financial intermediaries is subject to percentage tax? So first, your interest commissions and discounts from lending activities as well as income from financial leasing on the basis of the remaining maturities. So you count from the remaining maturities. So from the date, you count from the current date up to the maturity date. The current date up to the maturity date. If the maturity is five years or less, so this is equal or less than two, five years, 5%. Five if more than five years, 1%. So take note on the remaining maturities under the law. What we mean by remaining maturities is from the date itself of the payment up to your maturity date. So for example, you have a loan amount, uh, 3 million pesos payable monthly for six years, starting January 1, 2021. Okay. So 3 million for six years, we pay 500,000 per year. And then let's say uh, you have their 10% interest so, January, uh, let's say December 31, 2021, your interest income is one month, right? So, 3 million times 10%, uh, times 12%, times, let's change the rate to 12%, times 1 over 12. 3 million times 12%, times 1 over 12. So we have here 30,000 pesos. That is your interest on December 31, 2020. So loan 3 million due after six years. January 1, 2021. Starting January 1, 2021, rate is 12%. So on December 31, 2021, your interest rate is 12%, 1 over 12. So you count from December 31 until the due date. So with this, it is already five years. So look if ever, five years siya, di pa sa 5%. Pero kung January 1, uh, January 31, 2021 yan, is still 3 million times 12% times 1 over 12. It's still that is 30,000, right? So this one, from January 1, 2021, until six years thereafter, this is more than five years. So you use 1%. So you count on the date of your receipt, of your particular interest or commission or discount, then you look whether it is less than or equal to five years or more than five years. Next, if you receive dividends and equity shares in net income of subsidiaries, this is 0%. Remember, under your final taxes for intercorporate dividends, generally, it is not subject to tax. That's why it's 0%. Next, we have your royalties, rentals of property, profits from exchange, and all other items treated as gross income under the income tax law. You already know we have different items of gross income. So if the gross income of that bank is interest, commission, and discount, you use this rate. If the gross income of that bank comes from dividends or equity shares, you use this rate. If the gross income is other than that, you use 7%. Okay, all other gross income, 7%. Therefore, 
gains from foreign currency, debt instruments, derivatives, and similar financial instruments is 7%. Okay, so rule for your banks. You look into your gross income of your bank. If that is your interest, commission, or discount, less than or equal to 5 years, 5%. More than 5 years, 1%. If that is dividends, intercorporate, it is 0%. Other items of gross income, 7%. Other items of gross income, whether it is trading gain, royalties, rentals, whatsoever. If that is an other item, 7%. Okay? So again, in percentage tax, please just take a look into the certain business activity and know the tax base and know the tax rate. This is just easy for you. Next, we have your non-bank financial intermediaries without quasi-banking function. A while back, we have your non-bank with quasi. A while back, we have your with quasi. Now, we have without quasi-banking functions. So, the tax base is your gross receipts again from sources within the Philippines. So what is tax? We have your maturity period. It's five years or less. Maturity period is more than five years. Again, on interest, commissions, and discounts. 5% and 1%. Other items of gross income, 5%. So this is easier. You look into the gross income of that non-bank financial institution. Then if that is an interest, commission, or discount, le less than or equal to five years, one uh, five percent if more than five years one percent other items five percent okay so this is easier to memorize rather than the other one but actually if you know how to remember what items of gross income is subject to percentage tax or gross receipts is person subject to percentage tax it would be easier for you to memorize those items Next, we have your life insurance company. So what is subject to business tax? Of course, your life insurance company is under life insurance. Under life insurance. What is the tax base? That is your total life insurance premiums collected. Collected. Whatever is the mode of collection. Whatever mode of collection. Meaning, be it in cash, in notes, in credit, or substitute for money. So for example, you have here your different life insurance and you have received the following. So cash, 3 million pesos. And then we have your check of 400,000 pesos. So whatever mode of collection, be it cash or any substitute of money, notes or credits. So this is 3.4 million. You multiply it to your tax rate of 2%. So 3.4 million times 2%, that is our insurance tax due or life insurance tax due or percentage tax due. 3.4 times 2% is 68,000 pesos. 68,000 pesos. Okay? That's for life insurance companies. Next, you have your foreign insurance companies. So what business activities of foreign insurance companies is subject to percentage tax? First, we have your fire, marine, or miscellaneous insurance agent. Another is your direct insu insurance from abroad. Please do not forget the tax base. Here in your fire, marine, or miscellaneous insurance, this is based on the insurance premiums collected. Again, whatever mode. So when we say whatever mode, be it cash, credit, money, or any substitute for money. Tax rate, 4%. How about for direct insurance from abroad? So when we say direct insurance from abroad, the uh, insurer is from abroad. The insurer is from the abroad. And you, as the customer of the insurance, gets, a, gets an insurance directly from them. So here, your tax base is the amount of your payment. So here, it is the seller who is subject to the percentage tax here, it is the buyer based on your payment. Again, whatever mode of payment, whatever mode of payment, and the tax rate is 5%. Next, we have your amusement. So for your amusement, 
we have only certain amusement activities that is subject to percentage tax. We have your boxing ex exhibition, but take note, place for boxing exhibition. Next, place for professional basketball games, Cox, cockpits, cabarets, night or day clubs, high ally and race trucks. The tax base is gross receipts. So the total gross receipts, whatever is the mode in which we receive something. So whether it is based on your cockpit itself or based on your restaurant in that cockpit, so long as it is based on your receipts, then we include it. Tax rates for boxing exhibition, 10%. Basketball games, 15%. Cockpits, cabarets, nightclubs, 18%. High ally and race trucks, 30%. So please just take note of the business activities again, their tax base and the tax rate. Take note, total cross receipts. Let's have an example. So Naruto operates a cockpit. So this is a cockpit. Inside the cockpit, he also operates a, a restaurant. So take note again, whatever receipt. So the total receipts, let's get the total receipts. So we have here 750,000. What is the rate for a cockpit? If you still remember, the rate for a cockpit is equal to 18%. So 750,000 times 18% is equal to 135,000. So this is your amusement tax due. Okay. Again, remember total receipts. Next, we have your winnings. Okay. Uh, as we said a while back, based on your different percentage tax, we only use your gross. However, in your winnings, we use your net. So what do we net here? The cost of ticket. So take note, only two with items with less cost of ticket. So what business activities on winnings is subject to percentage tax? First, we have your person who wins in horse races or high ally. So we have your gross winning, less cost of ticket, 10%. Next, we have your winnings from double, forecast, quinella, and trifecta bets. We have, again, your winnings, less cost of tickets, 4%. Next, we have your owner of winning race, horses, based on the price. So your gross winnings, again, on your price, 10%. So take note of our tax base for the two items of the winning of your horse races, high ally, double, forecast, quinella, and trifecta, we deduct the cost of ticket. For the winner of the race horses, just get the price or the gross winnings 10%. Okay, let's have an example. A horse racing aficionado has the following winnings during a particular race day. So we have your winnings and cost of ticket 100,000 less 5,000. So what is the amount of our tax base? 95,000. So this is a horse racing. So person who wins in horse racing is 10, subject to 10%, so times 10%, 9,500. If you are asked what is the net winnings, the net winnings is equal to your winnings less your percentage tax of 9,500. So your net winnings is 90,500 in case you are asked of net winnings. Net winnings is equal to your winnings less percentage tax. How to compute your percentage tax? Except for the owners of the horse, what we do is your winnings less your cost of ticket multiplied by your tax rate. Okay? If we go back, except for the owner of the winner of the horse, owner of the winning horse, we subject it based on the winnings. But on the two, we deduct the cost of ticket. Last, we have your stock transactions. So under your stock transactions, these are certain stock transactions into your Philippine Stock Exchange. So we call this your listing transactions, wherein if you are a private entity or a private corporation going public, so you want to list your shares, you list them to your PSE. So if you are listed in the PSE and you trade whatever is the selling price, 610 of 1%. So traded in the PSE, 610 of 1%. But if that is an initial public offering or 
initial public offering or the first time you offer it to the public, so upon private, you list them to the PSE, we look into the proportion. So what is this proportion? The proportion is based on your share sold divided by your total outstanding shares. Okay, so for example, you are a private corporation, you have 100,000 shares. You want now to become public, so you will issue additional 100,000 shares. So assuming on your additional 100,000 shares, there will be a purchase of 20,000 shares. Okay, and then another 30,000 shares and another 50,000 shares. So to get for the proportion of this one, 100,000 is the old shares. You will issue another 100,000 shares. So your total outstanding shares now is 200,000 because you will issue another 100,000 broken down as this one. So 20,000 is bought by A, 30,000 is bought by B, and 50,000 is bought by C. So you get the share sold divided by the total outstanding shares. So this is 10%. So that is less than or equal to 25%. Whatever is the selling price, that is subject to 4% percentage tax. Next, we have your 50 over 200,000. So this is, again, 25%. So that medyo malaki. Palitan natin. 20,000 kay 80, uh, 80,000 kay C. So 80,000 divided by 200,000. 80 divided by 200, we have 40%. So if that is 40%, the selling price of the 80,000, so 80,000 shares, let's say you sold it at 100 pesos per share. We have here 8 million. So that is 40% greater than 30, greater to greater than 33.33%. So 1% lang ang tax rate mo dyan. 80,000. If ever you are already listed in PSE, if before you are already listed, then 6 ten of 1%. If ever it is your IPO, your first time listing, and you sell shares at the time of your listing, you look into the proportion of your shares sold. So how do we compute for your proportion? Shares sold divided by total outstanding shares. So the selling price, you look whether it is 4%, 2%, or 1%. Guys, please take note in your percentage tax. Just remember what business activity, what is the tax base, and what is the tax rate. We go now to your percentage tax return and payment. So we will find a return for each branch or place of business, or you can file a return, a consolidated return. The general rule is you file a quarterly return 25 days after the end of each quarter because percentage tax or your uh, VAT, you know this one, they are quarterly. Except for VAT, there is a monthly reporting. Okay? Percentage tax at the end of the quarter. Okay, so guys, take note, percentage tax, you remember what business activity, what is the Tax base and what is the tax rate? That's all for percentage taxes.